Hello, faithful viewers. Anyway, um, earlier today I watched a movie called The Rockets, directed by Michael Bay, starring Sean Connery, the incomparable Sean Connery, and Nicolas Cage as like two unlikely heroes who saved the day from evil Ed Harris, who's gonna drop, he's like this terrorist guy who wants to drop nukes on, like, biological weapons on San Francisco. Anyway, um, the movie was a fine piece of action cinema. It's one of the most exciting movies I've ever watched. Um, I was messing around with my friends after watching it, and, like, we kept trying to come up with crazy puns, like, obviously, The Rock Rock. And my favorite one, referring to director Michael Bay, was San Francisco is Bay's area. But, I was just thinking, and thankfully the glory of digital cameras is that if I'm just thinking about something, I can film whatever I'm saying in roughly two minutes. Anyway, I was thinking what makes a fine piece of action cinema. Now, I'm a big action movie fan. Um, this summer I did nothing but watch action movies. I love action movies. It's got some great escapism. Man, there's like great escapism. Because they're all about like special forces and crap. Anyway, um, so first off I'm going to pose this question to the fans. What do you think makes a good action movie? Now, um, I'm going to repeat this at the end of the video, but Seven of the official drink of action movies. Um, action movie, in my opinion, action, action, I say, action, like Sean Connery. There's going to be a great action movie, my friend. I'm going to star in this movie called The Rock. It's this action movie about myself. I'm Sean Connery. I'm Sean Connery, and. I get to save San Francisco from all these crazy bastards. Anyway, I think a great action movie besides The Rock, and ignoring Aliens, because Aliens is not really dumb, I personally think an action movie should be really fun. Now, a great example of how not to do an action movie is Steven Seagal, any Steven Seagal movie that isn't that doesn't have the name Under Siege in the title. Because okay, now ignoring um, above the law, it's more of a thriller anyway. A uh, great example is Steven Seagal's Hard to Kill. Now it's, it's just a generic action movie, but it just takes itself way too seriously. Now this is why I like about Jerry Bruckheimer's movies, they don't take themselves seriously. You've got Top Gun, which is this action movie, but it also just happens to be ridiculously homoerotic. I mean, I'm gonna hopefully I'll link this in the YouTube description. There's just this absolutely great volleyball scene in Top Gun that just cannot be... It just had to be intentional. It is like the most homoerotic thing I've ever seen. And Tom Cruise's character leaves this just giant homoerotic mass to go have sex with a woman. So now getting now just throwing homoeroticism and action movies behind us, that's for another day. Um, I personally believe that yeah, an action movie should be really fun. Because Sean Connery No, I j I alright, going on to you here. Um, anyway, Sean, I've noticed I, I'm beginning to talk about Sean Connery. I've got this little list of the issue. I'm, I'm talking about Sean Connery just unintentionally. Um, an, ag, an action movie should be fun. Like, audiences are not going to go like pay tickets to your action movie to like have themselves challenged. That's what a drama is. And at audiences fought to see action movies the same way they fought to see comedy. The thing is, 
comedy has some respect. There's some really intelligent comedy. It's like Rushmore and Annie Hall. Rushmore, I'm Sean Connery. Um, but action movies, there's just... Like, the most intelligent action movie is... Aliens. Uh, uh, like, Aliens does have some fun bits. It's kind of serious, but... Again, Alien is also, Aliens is also funny. Like, it's got some great one-liners, like, Bill me! Game over, man! Game over! Um, so, for, first, let me just reiterate this again. I will not be able to reiterate this enough. An action movie should be fun. That is its foremost priority. Second, an action movie must not have an overly complex, complex plot. This is what ruined the movie Smoke and Aces for me. Now, alright, I tried to watch, I, I watched Smoke and Aces for an hour. Smoke and Aces. I watched Smoke and Aces for an hour. It was just like this confusing mess. There were, there were like nine plot lines going, like every single assassin had something going on and the movie wasn't even two hours long. Um, I think you should, like, you can, you are allowed to have multiple plot lines if the movie is over two, two hours and twenty minutes it is. But, like, in a movie that's not even two hours, you shouldn't be allowed to have more than five plot lines going, if that. Like, five plot lines is stretching. Like, The Rock itself is, is a great action movie because there's one plot, no, there are two plot lines. There's, like, the main plot line, which is, uh, Good guy Sean Connery and Nicolas Cage. And then there's the second not as important plot about the bad guys. So what like Smoking I couldn't watch Smoke Maces after an hour. I just had no idea what was going on. And worse, I couldn't care for the characters. Which brings me to my third point. An action movie should have good characters. Like granted you don't need to be a great actor. With the exception of Bruce Willis, who I feel is a fine actor. If you've seen The Sixth Sense, you probably agree with me. Um, yeah, like, your action movies need to have a character that's really fun. Like, that's why the only good Seagal picture is Under Siege, because that one, Steven Seagal plays this cook who just happens to be the only capable person on an entire battleship. Which is just silly enough that it's a, it ends up being really fun. And also you have Gary Busey. Um, so yeah, just memorable characters. Like, for example, the most memorable character I think in an action movie, and one of the best, is John McClain, Bruce Willis' hero in the Die Hard movies. You be crazy, motherfucker. Um, like, if you have a memorable character who's fun, just relatable enough to the audience, like, he's kind of a train wreck, and it, like, his marriage is falling apart, he, he just seems like a real person, and that's what makes him a memorable character. And then you've just got completely generic characters like, um, once again, going back to Hard to Kill, which is not a very good movie. I've seen it twice, so I know what I'm talking about. Um, the Steven Seagal's character is named Mason Storm. Mason Storm. And, like, he's a cop, and he's a good one, and he's so good that, like, the congressman wants him dead, so... Yeah. And the problem with Steven Seagal's character comes out like such a jerk. He's not even likable. Because he's like boinking his wife. And like that's the thing. The first ten minutes you just see him playing grad ass with his wife. Then he gets shot. And as soon as he comes out of, coma, out of a coma, he boinks a supermodel employee of the coma ward he's at. It's just so stupid. It's not fun. It's just really stupid. He, it just makes like Seagal's character completely unrelatable. And that's ignoring the fact that Steven Seagal can't act. 